What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of What's on the Menu. Dale has so many stories that he has to sink his teeth into. He is freaking chomping at the bit. Dale, good morning. How are we doing? I have words to say. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's lead off. College football, big, big, big news. So Dale can stop crying now because the Big Ten had an enormous announcement, and it might have been because of a hot mic yesterday, but there was reports that said... Big Ten's back, baby. October 24th, we're going to have an eight-game schedule. My Ohio State Buckeyes are going to take the field that Saturday. So Big Ten did it this way. They're all coming back. Every team, even Michigan's bum asses, got on board to come get the ass waxed in a couple weeks. October 24th is be week one. Every Big Ten team is going to play eight games, and it's an eight-plus-one format. So at the end of the eight games, on December 19th, will be championship Saturday. East versus West, one seeds in each conference will play each other all the way down to the bottom. So we'll find out who the best team in the Big Ten is, and we'll find out who the worst team in the Big Ten is. This setup is unbelievable, and let's go. Okay, so you have the eight-game schedule, so all the Big Ten is only playing – Big Ten conference opponents, that plus one is that ranking. So you're saying – so we assume that Ohio State's number one. They're going to play whoever is going to finish number one. Okay, Hypothetically. Oh, good. And then we get to see Rutgers and Nebraska play each other for last place. One game at a time in Columbus. So (laughs) October 24th will be step one. We worry about the team in front of us. How big is this? How is morale? I mean, you have to be ready to run through a wall right now. Morale's high. Listen, Cleveland teams have me as low as I've ever been. My Ohio State Buckeyes are the one team that keep me level-headed, and the fact that they're back, I got a jolt of energy this morning. I needed it. I needed it bad. Like that shot of adrenaline. I yep. absolutely love it. I needed it. Needed it. Let's move on. Dude, your nuggets. Ooh. Holy fuck. Damn. Okay, what a game. Because Vegas, all these talking heads, all of these pundits, whether it's ESPN, whether it's Fox Sports, CBS Sports, whatever. Oh, but it's not enough. They can't come back again from a 3-1 deficit. And this curse that they talk about the Clippers, yeah, that shit's real. They cannot advance past the second round. Jamal Murray, I really feel like, is taking that next step after being tormented last year, not only by the media, but by his competition. And Nikola Jokic, talk about – I'm never betting against him again. Why would I take the under on his six assists or whatever? Dude had a triple-double in the third quarter. Honestly impressive. I can't believe it. I don't know how they're going to stack up against L.A. I got to run the notes. But everyone's saying, oh, Lakers in six, blah, blah, blah. Anything's possible at this point. Get out of here. Lakers in five, first of all. Second of all, Jamal Murray and Nokic, dude. You're absolutely right. Those dudes – that might be one of the best one-two combos in the league. Give them two more years of maturing, and I've put them with anybody in the league. Yeah. Flip it over to the Clippers really fast. Talk about playoff P. I feel bad for Paul George. He's been an underdog his whole life. Had to go to Fresno State. Got drafted by Indiana. Then went to Oklahoma City. Not the greatest of circumstances. And then he goes to a big market finally, and you have people trying to cheer for him. And he was nowhere to be found. My boy Kawhi. I don't know what happened. This is maybe – they were one of the teams that didn't want to go to the bubble. And maybe this is a due, in fact, to the leadership. Doc has crumbled in this before. It happened about five years ago against the Rockets. And they don't have any point guards. Shamit got hurt last night, and they trained away so much. And maybe the writing was on the wall. Maybe it was meant to be. So I have a couple of takes from the Clippers side. One, how many more opportunities is Doc Rivers going to have in L.A.? He had Lob City. He had great teams there already. Now he gets Kawhi Leonard, Leonard, Paul George, like a very good team around them, and he blows a 3-1 lead again. I don't know how many opportun- how many more opportunities Doc Rivers realistically will have to win. I think Steve Ballmer wants to win. He wants to win now. I don't know. Do you keep Doc Rivers around? That's a good I think question. so. I think in wake of what happened a few years ago with the Donald Sterling thing, and he's been such a powerful voice in that locker room. I just don't get don't why his players can't buy in to win one game. That's the thing. So many people rule out the Nuggets, and they never gave up. Credit yeah, to Michael Malone. They want to win a title. Um, and two, Kawhi Leonard is finally going to feel the pressure that LeBron has felt ever since that Maverick series. Kawhi <laughs> is going to have this on his shoulders the rest of his career, and if he doesn't, then I'm going to blame the media because they have put that pressure on LeBron for less. At least LeBron's happened in the finals. 
Yeah, but I there don't think no it's going to bother Kawhi There's as no much. Box. They trade away a ton of assets to multiple, multiple first-round picks over the next few years. They got rid of Shaquille Alexander. And you have guys like Marcus Morris, who is a free agent. So I don't know about the integrity of the core of this team. The core is Kawhi and Paul George. Just like the core of any LeBron team is LeBron James and his number two. All right, That's all right. Enough, enough of LeBron. Other game really fast in the Eastern Conference. Bam, bam, bam. At a bio. Honestly, incredible. My other bet that I had yesterday, Jimmy Buckets, he did hit. Thank God. He came out and had, I think, two three-pointers. It had to be more than a half. So hit that. On the flip side, though, I still think the Celtics are a better team. But, God damn, that was an impressive play. Really? See, I still – Still have the Heat. I think the Heat in six or seven in this series. I think the Ooh. Heat have ten players that you can throw at teams. I love their young five. I love their veteran five. The veteran five that they have down the stretch. Dude, if it's, if it's a close game, I'm taking that veteran five over the Celtics five. I, I really like what Spolstra's doing. I, I, I really do. I feel like Tyler Hero, not rookie yep. of the year uh, by any stretch. I think that's no. John Moran. Yeah. But he's filled in well. Jameson Crowder. Then Jimmy Butler, the heart and soul of that right. team. It just seems like wherever he goes, whether he's doing – and you know, Bam's deadlifts in his room or making coffee. And then you have Bam out of bio. What a play. Yeah. Uh, not the greatest play. Let's head over to the diamond. Uh, Dale, your Indians are uh, not doing too well. My Indians, I'm just going to stand here and say it. I've been saying it all year. The Indians are fraudulent. <laughs> they are a fraudulent baseball team. They cannot hit the ball. We look like we have a lineup of a team that's tanking. I don't understand it. We, I, I don't get it. A week ago, we were in first place. Now we're six games back. If we scored four runs a game, we would probably be close to being undefeated. <laughs> but we cannot give our pitching staff any support. And then last night, the third leg of my parlay, you Darvish is on the mound for the Cubs, right? The over-under yeah. in the Cubs-Indians game is eight and a half. The Indians mm -hmm. can't hit water if they fall out of the goddamn boat. The score is five to three in the top of the ninth. The last leg of my parlay. I hit the over in the Heat game. I hit the plus seven in the Nuggets game. And then I had the Indians Cubs under eight and a half. It was 5-3, top of the ninth. And the Indians scored fucking two runs to tie it up at 5-5. Five, five. So I lost the parlay. Then the next half inning, we just give up runs. We hit two batters and we lose the game. Like, Keep an eye on the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, they're They've quietly good. They been a, a really good team. They Tim Anderson, runs. a possible MVP candidate. And then you got those pesky twins in front of you. Sorry, Dale. My, my Padres lost last night, too, but hopefully take the rubber match. They are on ESPN tonight, so hopefully they don't wilt under pressure. At least the Padres are not fraudulent, just like us. <laughs> Whatever. It is what it is. All right, guys. Give us a follow. WOTM Daily. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Will and I will be here tomorrow with some picks. We have Thursday night football coming at you. Browns, Bengals. Yes, sir. Big, big day for my Cleveland Brownies. So have a good night, guys. Enjoy hump day. William, catch you later. See ya.